Okay, uh, so you need to publish, but uh, on the previous lecture we stopped at the point that there is a lot of uh, guides how to write an article and uh, this one is very recent, so it was published just maybe this June. Uh, and this one by Professor Josh Whitesides published uh, like 15 years ago. And uh, well, we stopped at the point that I am disagree with both of them. Uh, and I think that uh, this guideline and outline, they're a bit, a bit wrong. Why? Uh, all of these scientists, they are already famous. They went through a lot of works, a lot of projects, a lot of papers, and they forgot the main thing. They knew a lot, and we are not. So, uh, when you received your, I, I think the first year students already received uh, some kind of projects or some outlines maybe of the project, so you should prepare your first article somewhere in the April published in maybe one year and so on. Uh, so how should you proceed? In my opinion, it's just my opinion again, the third one after Whiteside, so it's like a Professor Richardson, Professor Whitesides and me. Uh, okay, the sequence of draft writing. So what's the first thing you need to start with? Huh? Well, uh, it, 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 it's on the slide. The answer is obvious. You need to start from introduction. Not, not, not with, uh, like here, uh, define the key message of the article. How you can define a key message if you don't know anything about your area of research. You just start how you can define a key message. To define a key message, you need to read, I don't know, for years, at least for months, to understand what's the problem in, in your area. And so draft an outline. Uh, drafting an outline is the one of the hardest thing ever. So the easiest one is to start from introduction. So you need to read a lot of papers in your area and well, write them down to make your own start of the paper. Uh, well, uh, Writing an introduction is one of the easiest, as I said, and uh, there's some keys how to prepare your introduction. It's not very hard. So, uh, introduction based uh, mainly on your title. So, uh, there is no point to make a final title at the start of the work. So, anyway, you will correct it. Uh, make some uh, alternative names for your article and so on, but uh, uh, the types of article titles define the structure of introduction in some, in some way. So uh, typical, typical article titles can be like you synthesize something and this something behaves something else and it can make something like treat and diagnostics or something like this or a uh, very, very versatile approach. It's a very frequently used uh, title, type of title. So uh, introduction typically divide in, into some separate sections, which are anyway should be linked to each other. So in any introduction, you in any case should start from why all of this is important. It's a mandatory point to state why this is important. And uh, after this one, you need to follow a simple rule. If you are discussing something like A, you should say what is A, what other A exists, and uh, point by point, A behaves, so what is behave like B? And compare, it's uh, always important to compare what you described, what you discovered with other things which are described in the field. So, and well, I, wouldn't stop on each of this point because, well, you can just take a photo if you need. But uh, the main point here is you need to uh, separate your introduction into different sections and each section should be connected with each other. Connection between uh, uh, paragraphs in article is very important because if you lose connection 
between two paragraphs, it would be some troubles in delivering your information to your readers. Uh, so, uh, what is, so, introduction. Uh, okay, what is next? The answer is on the screen. So, uh, material and methods. Uh, you always perform something, I mean some experiments, and uh, as long as you perform this experiment, you should put something in your laboratory journal. So, instead of putting this on paper, you can directly put it in Microsoft Word or whenever you want. And it would be just easier to uh, transfer them from draft to a paper. And so what about, uh, what's about uh, methods? So it's not very, again, not very hard to describe because uh, you're going for materials. Do not forget to include some manufacturers, country, so when you obtain these materials. And there is no shame to state that you bought from Vekton, Novosibirsk, or something like this one, or if you bought them from some, uh, I don't know, local market, I will show you some examples. So you need in any way state where you obtain this material, because it's very important. Uh, and uh, usually you're going from uh, some very narrow methods uh, or uh, Let's say, if you are writing about some nanoparticles that are intended to use for something, you need to start point by point how you performed in your lab when you performed these experiments. So if you start from nanoparticles, you should start from nanoparticles here. Uh, because it's no, uh, no point to start from, I don't know, some animal's behavior before you describe nanoparticle synthesis methods. So it's obvious. Uh, and uh, try to make a separate sections for synthesis like nanoparticles alone, some conjugation, uh, physical characterization alone, cytotoxicity alone, and, uh, well, different biochemical characterization uh, in other way how to use or application of this particle. And uh, it's easy task, but not as easy as it can be. Why? Uh, this example of an uh, already published protocol, magnetite nanoparticles, synthesized here in SCAMP for uh, decades almost, and since, uh, anyway, there's some drawbacks in this protocol. Can you very quickly find at least something that should be added here? Added. What you should add? No, no, no. Source of uh, in materials. So it's like section 2.1. Next section. Huh? No, 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 no. No reactions. Here you just describe a protocol. Uh, it's well. You can describe reactions in your results or discussion if it's important. But here you need to describe how to repeat. Okay. Yep, first one where is the concentration of ammonia solution. It's like, and uh, at least it's a water solution, not some other kind of solution, but okay. Well, method, it's not just salt gel synthesis. Nope. What else? Some details you need? Well, th there should be some reference, but uh, I'm not sure it's shown here, but yeah, of course, it's some reference to Drazdov et al. Okay. Where are you from? <laughs> What is room temperature? Room temperature in, uh, I don't know, Greece and uh, like somewhere in Canada, obviously different in different time of, uh, time of year. So uh, two advices, never say at room temperature, state an exact temperature you have in the room and try to repeat all of the experiments at the same temperature. So air conditioning is mandatory in the serious lab. Uh, well, we lack like this in SCAMT, 
especially during summer months, but it's not very good. Uh, magnet. What magnet? How many Tesla? What's the shape of the magnet? How you place this magnet near the particles and so on? It's maybe not very important here, but still it's important parameter of the magnet. Uh, and the last one we used to like ultrasound bass, uh, like uh, frequency and the power. This means nothing because power can be distributed in different ways in a different bass. You need to state how many watts per cubic centimeter. So it's a volume power of ultrasound. Without this parameter, this means nothing. So uh, it's just a for mistakes, but uh, definitely you can find some other additions, like what uh, flask do you use to mix this? With what you steer? So it was a bar for steering, or was it like uh, mixers of some kind? So it's a lot of uh, very small details that should be added here because if you cannot repeat it, so what's the point in the whole article? Uh, another example without, uh, well, it's different with some mistakes, just for you to show that every detail should be included, like spinach leaves were obtained from a local supermarket. So from Azbuk of Usa. Uh, you should include it here. It's no shame to say that you buy, bought it in, on a supermarket. It, uh, no point to grow it by yourself on your window and to use an, ex an experiment. So in uh, methods, sometimes it can be included like uh, how you choose and why you choose. Usually all of the explanations are moved to discussion. But in some cases, you can add like we use the bigger leaves uh, or not, be, uh, not bigger, we use the smaller leaves because all the leaves are easier to handle and so on. So some details can be added here, but usually all of the details are uh, described in discussion section. So, okay, next. Yeah, results. And discussion, because in most of the journals it's not only and what, uh, and. So some journals really have results separated from discussion. And here is one, well, let's say problem. Now, when, uh, we will discuss a bit later, uh, when you submit your article, you need to read a journal guidelines. And if in journal guidelines, it's strictly uh, said that you should uh, separate results and discussion and you already make a merged section, it's almost impossible to easily separate them again because you should basically rewrite both of these sections from scratch. Uh, so you should previously, before uh, you go into submit, before you go into write these results uh, and discussion, you should check at least first journal you're going to submit, at least first one. But in most cases, this section is united. So results and discussion. Uh, what is about result and discussion? Uh, I will show you some basic structure uh, and we'll ask you one question in the end. So please follow. Uh, so you should start, uh, again, this is an example from our typical articles like synthesized and add to cells and add to something and well, we are brilliant publishing advanced materials. Uh, synthesis, so you need to, what a general idea behind the synthesis, how to provide specific sides, charge, so we have a plan and we follow it and we obtain something and we study it and so on. And the next step, usually in most cases, it's some kind of cytotoxicity because all of our things is biomedical, biocompatible and so on. Uh, the next one is preliminary screening. Uh, what is preliminary screening? For example, if we have some magnetite particles, we check their magnetic properties. So just in tube. What is magnetic properties, magnetization and so on. And next we should explain uh, how this result is correlated with our results. For example, our nanoparticles have magnetization like 20 or like 70 and the maximum magnetization can be 90, so our magnetization is a bit lower because our particles is imperfect. And 
it's enough for explanation. The next one, we should draw some conclusion on the data and move to stop, stop, conclusion of the data. The next, we should screen for some specific behavior. For example, we add to some vessel model, we add some magnets, we can control the movement of this particle with something, or we observe some additional behavior which should be explained, and we draw some explanation one, explanation two, why this happened and why this happened. Next, we should prove all of these explanations because, because it's just uh, we observe the effect, we uh, propose some explanation and we prove with additional experiments. And based, based on all of this, you should draw a final scheme, how this works. And uh, in some cases, it's good to add some additional proofs like cherry on the cake. Some additional very, very interesting, very beautiful experiment to additionally prove your final scheme. So, uh, what is the most, now the question, what is the most important part of results and discussion? Cherry on the cake? Nana, Nana Farm knows about cherry on the cake. Nope. Huh? Nope. No. No. Oh, look, look, look deeper, look deeper. Closer. <laughs> but no. I mentioned already this one when I told about introduction. These errors is the most important part. Every scene should be connected and go one by one to a final scheme. If you have some random behavior you observe during your experiments, like your magnetite particle have some fluorescence. It in no way connected with your primary experiment. You should not add this to your paper because you just will mess your final scheme with some additional random behavior which have nothing to do with your article structure and article ID and your title. It's a subject for, let's say, as I stated in conclusion, for further research, you can mention that also, we found some nice, interesting behavior, which is subject for further research. That's all. Everything should be connected. If something is not connected, don't waste time on digging down why is this performing so or not in other way and so on. Okay. Next one. Well, finally, conclusions and abstracts. It doesn't mean that you need to uh, write down an abstract and conclusion uh, in the last way. You can make some drafts of both of these sections during the course of your work. You will just add some details when you finished with your results, when you finished with your discussion and with your final scheme, you will finish with your conclusion. But, uh, but it's uh, not let's say, not a rule that you should not start abstract before you end with discussion or something like this one. But yes, abstract should uh, reflect the final, final version of your article. Uh, and uh, what's so special about abstract? Now, if you are ever will be going to our academic writing lab, lab uh, there's even some course there, as I remember, where they only uh, writing abstracts. So abstract is very important because there's only one way that most of researchers will read about your paper, especially if it's not open access. So only abstract is available. 
Uh, and that's why you need to spend a lot of time, uh, a lot of time, especially if uh, abstract is limited. Usually it's limited to 20, uh, 200 or 250 words, so it's very short. And you need to spend a lot of time to make it clear. What about abstract? It's just again abstract from one of our already published papers. So if you look on this one, it looks like a bunch of text, but it's not a some random text or as I want I just put something on my paper. No, it have a structure and the structure is some kind of universal for every research. So we're starting from a global problem, just one sentence. Everyone dying from thrombosis. Uh, some steps already were performed but it's not very efficient. That's why, uh, and some general approach exists. But uh, we use some approach that's similar but not similar and our approach is very unique and we applied it for the first time and uh, make some funny, funny looking name for this approach and then a short description of what you take like formagnetites, a little of enzymes, a teddy bear, thrombolo a bear teddy, thrombolysis radii. I'm going for a rhythm here. So, uh, and also we made something that no one can do. So it's a cherry of the cake here in the abstract uh, in the last sentence. And if you follow this some kind of plan, you can easily perform any type of abstract for any type of research paper. If you're going for review or for perspective, some very specific kind of paper, or maybe some, I don't know, not, uh, not a paper like nanoparticles and applications, something more wide, conceptual, let's say. Uh, this plan maybe works not very good, but still for most papers this works fine. Uh, and next one, conclusion. So conclusions have its own structure, very similar to abstract. And if you are separate sentence by sentence, you can go like, again, solving of the global problem is very important, still people dying and so on, but we made only attempts, never say we solved our drug will save the world, we just humble, humble attempt, we're humble scientists, just at only attempt. And uh, say what, what you achieved, because when I specified in the first lecture, uh, if you are reading the article, you should aim for conclusion to find some numbers here. Because, for example, here I don't need to read my own article. I can proceed to conclusion and see that uh, seek around 175% uh, increase. So it's the main number of the whole article. We increased like uh, on 75% thrombolysis rate. Uh, so it's very important to include some number in your conclusion and uh, you should explain briefly again why and a bit specifically how it uh, performed and you should left some space for problems so for future work because you cannot done everything in a single article so uh, some problems but, well, partially we solved them and so on, and, well, magnetite will save the world. Anyway, I can't resist to add this sentence here. Uh, anyway, you should left some room for future research for yourself or for your colleagues. Uh, and, well, we are done with the, let's say, main structure of the article. What's next? Well, basically, yeah, uh, title, also and affiliation. And this is uh, maybe, I don't know, I don't want to rate by numbers, but it's very important, but uh, this one is more important. So, uh, also some acknowledgements. Uh, what about these points? So, uh, do you know how the authors placed in article? Have you ever think about it? Nope, probably, because it's very, very well uh, managed structure. The first one, also known as the first author, uh, is who wrote all the text and proceed with the article. So basically it's the people who made a lot of paper drop. And it's uh, required 
from you to be a first author in your first paper, which you should publish in a year. So you need to write a lot. Uh, the second, the third place and all other places doesn't matter really, because it doesn't matter your second or your fifth or your, I don't know, tenth or so, something like this one. And usually it's like made a lot of experiments, not so a lot of experiments, like cytotoxic data, some minor experiments, help with minor experiments. And the last one, also very important, who gave money for all of this stuff? Uh, and usually this is a lab uh, a group leader or head of the lab. And uh, this is also called a correspondent also. And correspondent also perform all of the correspondence with journal and with people who want to write something about some uh, random scientists want to write about, I cannot perform your experiment, can't you provide with your details? So correspondent also will receive this email and transfer it to you and you will go to lab and try to repeat your own experiment. So uh, that's, uh, uh, the sequence of authors usually defined by correspondent author. So you should consult with your head of the lab or your supervisor or postdoc or whoever is responsible for this article, uh, what should be the sequence of this uh, of authors list. The next one is affiliation. So it's our current affiliation if you need it, uh, but with my email, you can place your email. So it's more university, it's like a university and our institute is like International Institute of Chemistry, uh, our address and so on. Uh, you can also place count.itmo.ru, so our URL address here, it's also nice. What about acknowledgements? Well, acknowledgements is everything connected with uh, who helped you to obtain your results, but not as much as to include in authors lists. So everyone who helped you to read for mistakes in English, who perform very small experiment like make two images on scanning electron microscope, or I don't know, help with advice uh, a lot, a lot with advices, but do nothing for your paper directly. So uh, do not add some text, for example. And especially who gave money, not this person, but the foundations. So acknowledgements can look like this work was supported by a Minister of Science and Higher Education of Russia Federation grant number. So it's our mega grant program currently, last year, this year, so. But in case you need to mention a lot of grants, uh, a lot of funds in a single article, in some cases, this is prohibited. So for example, for Russia Scientific Foundation, in, current, uh, in its current form, you only can uh, include uh, works which is supported solely by a Russian scientific foundation. So again, uh, acknowledgement section is approved by the corresponding authors, so you should uh, consult with your supervisor about what to include here. Because, for example, the whole work was supported by Minister, da, 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 but the work of Vladimir Vinagada was supported by Minister da, 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 was the Dania number. Uh, well, okay. Uh, and if we have some our colleagues, like from St. Petersburg State Technological Institute, which helped with some uh, research like X-ray powder diffraction, and this is a requirement from them, so we should include them in acknowledgements. Do not forget to include and also send them email upon your article is published online. So thank you again. We have this article published. Looking forward for future work. Uh, okay, what is scientific foundations? Just for you to know, it's some examples because there's a lot of them. Most of them, uh, well, in Russian because it's Russian foundations. Uh, just for you to understand, it's a lot of sources of money for you to obtain. Uh, the main one, of course, it's the Russian Scientific Foundation. Uh, for St. Petersburg, it's like Ken Vashar, Committee for Science and uh, High School. Uh, UMNIC, one of the, well, let's say, so-so-so foundation. Uh, German Foundation, it's a Ministry of 
healthcare, Russian Federation, and mega gun programs. So a lot of funds to receive money, and you can check some there's some sites, some groups, for example, in Facebook and Telegram, which publish some lists of which uh, application is currently running. So you can check if there's some applications that you you can apply for, and so on. Uh, so. What next? The last one, I missed one of the slide because the last one is references. And with references, there's a lot of problems among people, especially who are not familiar with article structure. And this consumes a lot of time because you need to prepare a reference list, place reference in proper uh, places and so on. And still I talking already like 30 minutes and I want you to show this. It's not a slide, it's a video. I recorded just today's morning. So please enjoy five, seven, seven minutes of me again, and I will just sit here and... To add reference to your work with Mendeley, uh, you need first, of course, download Mendeley desktop app from official website, and then you can just follow to the links tab and uh, you will find a new addition here and the first thing you need is to insert bibliography somewhere in the end of your manuscript so just press and send bibliography and you are nice to go uh, now you need to add some works in Mendeley database so here like this one uh, and to do so you need for the sake of convenience create a new group here uh, just to not mess all of the article in one batch. Uh, so create new group, for example, I don't know, test, uh, test one, create group. Uh, you can share this group with your colleagues, but we just skip. Uh, and now you need to add some articles here. Uh, there's a lot of ways to add, but in most cases it's just manual addition. So you go into the site uh, with the article you want to cite. Uh, and you can copy either title or DOI number. Uh, in case of title, let's try this one. Uh, this is a very long title and in some titles there's also some special signs. It can be some chemical compounds, some uh, zeta letters and so on. Uh, and in case of this special signs, it wouldn't work or would work not very good. Uh, so uh, DOI number works uh, almost always, but let's try with the title. So we're going back to Mendeley, we press add and add entry manually. And uh, instead of no title, we just passed our title, save. But uh, now is, it's uh, no information about the articles available. So we press right click button, update details. And as you can see, no details uh, was updated. Uh, so uh, in this case, it, uh, in case it wouldn't work like this, uh, you go back and just copy a DOI number. And here in the information, uh, you can, uh, for example, like, uh, well, delete document and add, add again. And uh, you place DOI number here and press this magnifying glass button and just press save and all of your details is saved now and DOI number, ICCN number and so on. Uh, and now to cite this article, you need go back to your work. Uh, we already inserted by bibliography. So you place your, uh, when you want to cite this article and insert citation. So uh, do not forget to choose a proper library. For example, here test one and just uh, again control v uh, a doi number so uh, we have a doi number it was found and we just can press uh, on this uh, work and press ok uh, so this is our citation this is our bibliography and uh, next if you want to change the style of citations uh, as you can see there's a lot of different styles and for example, I don't have a style for this uh, particular uh, journal. I want to publish uh, article. I can go styles, more styles, 
uh, get more styles and here I can I, I don't know we we can just uh, copy for example I want to publish in this journal computers and biology and medicine if we close the window uh, this pop-up window with more styles will perish so you need to uh, like citation styles more styles uh, get more styles so uh, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Do not forget to delete some spaces. Now you can just press install and then uh, installed uh, and then go back to the installed styles and just find your journal and use these styles like selected. Now you can go back and well double check double check that it works uh, for now it doesn't work so again still advanced function uh, healthcare materials so press computers and here we go the style is updated well it's basically the all of the information you need to know about how it works with mendeley in case you need to import your uh, list of references from another work for example, uh, if you have some work with already made a reference list, but this reference list uh, was made uh, using, uh, for example, Microsoft Word in build software. So you can just copy this list. Uh, and there are one a very useful site, uh, which is called Citation Finder. And uh, well, it works nice. You can just past your citation list here and you should choose a citation format for no, Mendeley you should choose a BibTeX and uh, after this one you just press search and it would be searched for all of the citation as you can see boom 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 so now you need to choose a proper ver version of every article or book or I don't know site or something like this one. So you need to pat uh, patiently scroll down and like comparison of conventional, comparison of conventional author is the same. So the next one, taxistic assessment, taxistic assessment, also same, yeah, the same and so on. So after you check everything is okay. Uh, you need just download all selected citations, so citations.bib. And after this one, you can go to Mendeley and import like bibter and just import whenever you want and you got all of the citations. So don't need to waste your time and copy one by one, just a batch import. So I hope uh, this would be useful for you in your scientific career because we are scientists spending a lot of time making these references lists. I hope. I hope it would be useful for you not to waste your time on making a reference list. Uh, what, what is next? So we have a lot of time left. For, uh, uh, for to discuss how to publish your paper. Now you have everything prepared. You have a reference list, you have a discussion, everything. You need to find a journal. Uh, on previous lecture, I already said about what is SJR, so how to find a good journal and so on. But uh, finding only by SJR or by citations or other numbers, it's not very good for a young scientists because you don't know the scopes of the journal. So what is published, for example, in, let's say, Nana Today? Probably something connected with Nana and with Today. But uh, advanced functional materials, for example, uh, probably publishing, or for example, advanced materials, just advanced materials. It's some advanced materials but its main focus on some physically active like optical materials uh, not connected with biological application for biological application you have advanced healthcare materials so uh, it would probably not very good to publish some some this related articles to advanced materials because it will be out of scope 
as will be stated in rejection letter you will receive 10 seconds after your submission. <laughs> so uh, how to find a journal? It's a lot of different uh, ways now uh, which occurred only like maybe a couple of years ago. It's a journal finders which are available almost in any publisher. I already made, uh, mentioned what this publisher is again in previous lecture. So you can just journal finder Elziva, journal finder Springer, journal finder Wiley. This is one from Elziva, this one from a Springer, this one from Wiley. So you put your manuscript title here. It can be even not in, in a final form. You can on your preparation stage, on some kind of preparation stage, you can place it like preliminary manuscript title and your abstract. So it doesn't mean abstract or some kind of part of the introduction. Uh, the point is in keywords. So this one will analyze uh, some keywords like bio, nano, technology, some surfaces, maybe some electricity, some keywords. And we'll propose you with a list of journals uh, which you should send your article to. So for example, for our previously, which I showed you abstract and conclusion from our paper, which was published in Material Chemistry B, uh, it suggested advanced healthcare materials, but we received a reject from this one. Uh, and small, we also tried and also got a reject from this one. Uh, and for example, environmental toxicology and chemistry. But you should be aware why. Advanced healthcare materials is nice. It's in scope of different thrombosis, medical applications, so on. Small is a bit general journal about everything small. But environmental is in no way connected with something medical, at least for our case. And uh, relevance is high, but uh, this no, so small is much more relevant than this one. So you should pay attention to this. It's still a automatic algorithm. So it just help you not guide you where to publish. Well, we found a journal. What we should do next? We should go to like here, as I said, journal material chemistry B. We open a starting page of the journal and we need to submit our paper. In your future career, you will submit, resubmit, rewrite, resubmit, and again, and again, and again. Uh, like 10, 10 times in a row. So you should be prepared for all of this. And you should know some basic rules to save your time, because my first submission, uh, I spent like maybe a whole day on submitting, reading all of these points, what should be done in a paper, and so on. Uh, and now I, I can resubmit like in 15 minutes because I now understand what is important during submission and what is not important. So you go into starting page, submit your article. It's, well, the main button you need to press. And the second button you need to press, it, uh, it's uh, information and templates for authors. So what is templates? Templates now are not frequently used uh, but still I need to show you, it's some kind of, well, template for your article, so how to place title, which font you need to use, which font size you need to use, how to place your abstract and so on. This is template and this is how this article looks like when we add some, well, information, our information here. Some main points uh, is that, uh, for example, uh, images, figures should be placed always after uh, don't pay attention to green color, it's just left from a draft. Uh, so uh, figures should be placed on the top or on the bottom of the page, usually, usually, and after the first mention in the text. So you mention somewhere here, place figure after the mention. Not before, because probably if you uh, made something wrong with basics, uh, the article will be sent back to you in a well couple of hours to to remake to uh, redone this template so you should follow these rules uh, for example the second example is very 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 let's simple uh, template like from ACS journal if I remember correctly so like a plain text with a font 
12, 12 probably font, uh, Times New Roman and so on. But uh, in most of the journals now, it's uh, some kind of rules which are your article, your way. So during your first submission, you can send article using just some common sense. So which, what, what is common sense? You, you should use one English style. If you don't know, it's a British English and American English and all of us studying American English. But there are some journals from UK which use British English. Uh, I wouldn't explain what is the difference because the difference is not very like, uh, uh, well, let's say some examples, some, some easy examples uh, like a diameter. In, uh, if I remember correctly, in American you have diameter in British, you have dia metria. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, some kind of difference between these styles. Uh, one for Martin style. So identical font style, line spacing, indents, and so on. Figures again on the bottom of the page or on the top of the page after first mention. Figures should be in a high resolution. It's very very important. At least 300 DPI and. Uh, better in TIFF format. What is so special in TIFF format? Do not forget TIFF have layer by layer structure. So if you put something not very suitable for editor eyes, for example, you have something draw by your head, uh, by your hand and something, do not forget to discard all layers when you save your picture. There is option in Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator to discard layers. So it should be saved in TIFF format, but without layers. Uh, so reference according to journal requirements, and this is one of the most important thing, because if you have, as I mentioned in video, you should follow the journal style. If you uh, make in different style, uh, why is this important? When you first send your article to journal, they will fetch every single reference to prove that you are really uh, citing some articles. If there will be another style, uh, its algori alg algorithm in uh, this journal wouldn't work and they will be sent to you back for you to uh, check about the reference style. So this is the one of the most important thing. And uh, splitting sections, uh, sometimes sections are numbered, sometimes not. And do not forget the different paper formats like letter format, which is a bit smaller than A4 format and so on. Uh, and this like uh, some basic, some technical requirements for you to send your article for first evaluation, as it's called, first evaluation. So your article, your way. You can, you can, for example, use this style. But in case your article will pass a first evaluation, peer review process, and will be accepted for publication in some way, you should, anyway, you should put it in specific template like two columns or so but for the first uh, first submission to save your time you can use some very simple template in most of the journal so you should check check these guidelines if it stated your article your way or not stated your article your way so if stated you are good uh, what next about about English and about English proofing. So after you place your article in template, you need to go to proofing because uh, if you do proofing before, some, uh, some sentences, some, well, the structure of the article can alter in some way because some uh, sentences will be deleted, some sentences will be added, uh, and so on. Uh, proofing. Uh, if you ever heard, I don't know, about Grammarly. Grammarly is used to check your, like shown here, to check your uh, punctuation, uh, your spelling, your vocabulary, and so on. It can be downloaded for free, but only in basic form. So if you want to buy a advanced ver version, it costs a lot, like 10,000 rubles, a year ago, it 
$140 per year for advanced version. If you want to look how this advanced version looks like, it's up to five uh, computers can be linked to one account. So you can like split it by uh, 2000, uh, 2000 between five people, for example, and bought one license uh, for you five. If you want to look how uh, this advanced Grammarly looks like, I have a video here probably, if this will be works without a corner. But uh, anyway, I have a YouTube channel with this video. You can find this channel by my name and surname and find how this Grammarly for scientific text works. So it's nice, but it would not save you from all of the mistakes, of course. For example, this one is from Google Translate. So this text was proposed by Google Translate. It works nice, but still it has some basic mistakes. And this is the mistakes found by Grammarly. Not even the mistakes, but for example, uh, change the punctuation after eg. Yeah, it should be, I don't know, ways. It should be some comma after this one. Uh, do not start the sentence from this, because it's unclear what this is for. For example, in Russia, it's okay when we describe in something, something, and start the next sentence from eto. In English, it's not clear what is this about. So it should be stated this phenomena, or this situation, or this process to connect the sentence between each other. Uh, and well, I'm not sure if this is the last one. Not, 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 not the last one. Uh, okay, submission steps, of course, it's most important. After you hit the button to submit your article, you will be proceeded for your uh, for submission. Uh, and during the submission, you need already to prepare all of uh, things you need. You should prepare your main text. You should prepare all separate figures in high resolution. You should prepare your supplementary information with some figures that you not placed in your main text. And, well, uh, what is article should look uh, like, you can just open, well, any article. I, I hope you already read some articles, so you know how the articles should look like. But to submit it, you need to go to, again, it's like RSC, Journal of Material Chemistry B. You need to submit, start new submission. And you should follow so some very easy steps. It's really very easy, but confusing for the first time. So you should choose an article type. Double check before submitting your article if journal accepting article of your type. For example, this one uh, accepting almost all of type of papers like paper, review article, communication, highlights, perspective, and so on. But some uh, journals accept only review papers, for example. Or maybe only communication like ChemCom, chemical communication from the name. It's only for communications. Uh, so, uh, be sure you can send your article in this journal. For example, you choose a paper. It's just a common article, just a paper, full paper. The first step, you need to download all of the files. Please carefully read what you should to upload, like text and graphics save as a single PDF file with fonts embedded or as separate files. So you can prepare a whole very long PDF file with all images, with all text, or you can download, uh, for example, text separately, figures separately, uh, and, well, it depends on you, but I prefer to use a single PDF file because it's just, well, convenient. Uh, and it's also some mandatory points like cover letter. Cover letter, I personally don't like to write these cover letters because I'm not sure everyone ever reads this cover letter. But as you can see, it's marked by some red dot. So you should uh, add some letter why your article is important in general and especially for this journal. So cover letter usually provided by corresponding also or your lab head, but in some cases you can write your own cover letter and just do not forget to show it to your supervisor. Uh, and next step number three, you need to all add all of the authors. Uh, just in some cases it would be provided 
if you already submitted some articles, there will be a list of recent co-authors, but in most of the cases you should just place uh, email of your co-author here, press search, if no one found, you add new co-author and so on. Add everyone here and do not forget a proper order here, who is the first author, who is the second, who is the last, uh, in the same manner you have in your article. Reference. Reference is some kind of recommendation, so you can propose some reference for your paper. Why journals offer with proposing some reference? Because it's hard to find uh, a sufficient number of reference, uh, of reference in a limited time. For example, some journals pro uh, provide two weeks for article review and they should find, must find three people who agree to review your article and in some cases they can use uh, reference provided by you. But as we all know, we are living in a world where, when this reference is your friends or your colleagues from other universities or so on. So reference usually again provided by your supervisor. Who to put in this list? Uh, but from my experience, we just once once, say, uh, so not we, editor of the journal, sent our article to our colleague from another univer uh, university. And even in this case, uh, he uh, wouldn't include it in this list. So it's just because our errors are connected. But anyway, sometimes it's mandatory to add at least three or five and you should ask your supervisor for these references, especially what is important is emails, because it's not very easy to find emails of some random researcher somewhere in the internet. Uh, well, it's just how you should add reference. So email is a hard part because you need to know actual email of this person. And the last one, you need to answer some questions. Like, should, uh, want you to use some same tissue? Uh, what is the number of authors? Pre uh, is it previously submitted to uh, this publisher? And it could be a lot of different questions. It depends on journal, it depends on publisher. And if you don't know how to answer for sure, again, you can consult with your supervisor. Not you can, you must consult with your supervisor. And after all of this is completed, you will be uh, proceeded to proof validation. Proof validation available only for corresponding also. So if you are submitting from your personal account, after you choose a correspondent, do not forget when you submit from your personal, it's very important. It's one, again, one of the most important parts. If you submit the article from your personal account, you will be by default corresponding also. So you need to change this correspondent to your supervisor because it will be a lot of problems if you will be really corresponding after submitting the paper. So proof validation available only for corresponding also and you need to double check what is included in your article because in some cases it should look like this. Uh, especially when you download from Word to PDF. So this convertation going in a bad way and you receive something like this one. And the next two hours of your life you will be spending finding why this happens. So it is better to save in PDF before submission because sometimes it could be like, like this one. Why? Why? And well, you should address all of these issues and take this picture back to its normal place. Uh, well, and after this one, you submit your article and waiting for reject or for accept or for minor revision, major revision and so on. But it's, well, another story. Uh, and probably it's a lot of things uh, connected with application for money. But I think Daria should make additional lecture about this, how to apply for different programs. Nope. Daria Garbenka should present you. Huh? 
Oh, okay. So, well, uh, there's some, some paper, let's say, paper rules for applying, for example, for Russian Scientific Foundation, but I think it's a bit out of scope on your first course. During your first course, you would probably uh, not applying for something big like this. Uh, well, in the end, like a meme picture for you, a bit, a bit, a bit of fun. But picture not very fun, of course, because it's me. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, if you have some questions, you are welcome, as always. Uh, okay, uh, I'm personally not a fan of using a Google Documents because of this issue, because you cannot add the proper citations. And the last, one, uh, the last case, when we worked with guys on a paper, we just add a DOI numbers uh, inside of citations, and then one of us who have some sp uh, spare hours of its life just download when you finish your job one person just download and using a mendeley one by one add all of the citations so for now i don't know maybe it's some makers some add-ons for google documents but i don't know any so just press and uh, in case you work with someone in shared document it's better to use a doi number in case of names or full title or authors doi number is very convenient way to cite. Okay.